Hello, Squirrel Tribe 2.0. Happy Tuesday, my dude. So listen, um, we're just gonna jump right into this today because I wanted to share this thing with you that I found. Y'all know I have the memory of a squirrel, right? Like it's shit, it's absolute trash. I can't remember things a lot of the time. And I have really good long-term memory. Like I can remember stuff that's not really that important that I did when I was like seven. And I can remember every song of every word of every song I've ever heard. Um, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday though. Don't ask me what I wore last Friday and don't ask me what tea I drank yesterday. I don't know. I will forget things all the time. You guys have seen it happen when I'm trying to talk and a word just will not make its way from the back of my brain to the front and out my mouth. And it annoys the absolute crap out of me. And so, I've thought, okay, well, I got to take all these different vitamins and whatnot to help my memory. Y'all, it turns out, no, I don't. I just need to eat more sushi. It's like a win. I love sushi. Y'all know this. I've said it before. This is nothing new. This is not new squirrel information that you're learning today, but I love sushi. But I was on Yahoo earlier. I wasn't even going to make a video today because I was like, well, I didn't have anything fun happen yesterday, but then this morning was absolutely amazing. So I was going to share that with you guys. But then I was like, that's like four minutes of talking. They don't want four minutes of talking. And then I found this article, this little fun mamma jamma right here. And I'm going to explain it to you in a second. First though, I'm going to tell you what had happened this morning. So yesterday we did the live stream, Mimosa Monday, five o'clock central standard time. And for those of you who were here, you heard me talking about how I have slept on the couch numerous nights in a row, not because the man and I are fighting, not because I hate my bed, but because he's been snoring because he's been sick. Normally I wake up maybe two o'clock, four o'clock in the morning to the aggressive snore. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go out to the couch and I'll grab my pillow, put on some, some sleep pants, go out to the couch, throw a blanket over me, turn on a ceiling fan, call it done. Right? Well, last night, we laid our heads on our pillows. We'd get our kiss good night, I love you, whatever, and laid down. And I was closing my eyes and I was counting the sheep and I got to three and I heard and I was like, it's literally like 1040, what are we doing? It was so early and I was like, no, this isn't gonna work. So I poked him. By poked, I mean like lightly punched him. And I don't know if it was his chest, his stomach, his side, I don't know where I hit him, but I just, nah. and he said, huh? He goes, do you want me to go sleep on the couch? I was like, no, babe, it's fine. Just move a little so you'll stop snoring. He's like, okay. So he moved, but he didn't stop snoring. So then I was like, well, going out to the couch early. Like I just left the couch from watching TV. We're going to go right back to it. So I got uh, my sleep pants, grabbed my pillow, came out to the living room, turned on the ceiling fan, closed the blinds, laid down, went to sleep. And I guess normally each night, the past couple nights that I've ended up on the couch, it's been for two or three hours of sleep, maybe four at the max, right? Well, last night it was all the hours of sleep. But at 4.45 this morning, the man comes out and wakes me up. And it was one of those wake-ups where you weren't ready to wake up or expecting it. So the second I like heard him, I said, huh? And I was like, what? And he's like, hey, do you want to go take the bed? And I was like, what? And he was like, I'm, I'm up. Do you want the bed? And I was like, no, 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 it's fine. Do you want the bed? <laughs> like I was like drunk talk, even though I was stone cold sober, it's just cause I was like half asleep. I was like, no, no, you can have the bed. It's fine. I don't need the bed. I'm going to couch. I'm okay over here. And he was like, no, go take the bed. And I was like, but do you want it? You can just go take the bed. It's fine. I'll just stay here on the couch. And he was like, no, go get in bed. And I was like, okay. And I went to stand up and the entire apartment tilted and I was like, oh, this is not good. I felt the vertigo kicking in immediately. Like the, the mig I didn't have a headache, but it was like that migraine nausea kind of vertigo sense. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. So I make it to the bedroom, having to touch everything I walk by to keep myself upright, right? And I get in bed and I'm sitting up and I am like, what do I do? Do I wanna lay on my left side or don't wanna lay on my right side? Or you don't wanna lay on your back, you'll vomit and die. Like, what do you wanna do? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna lay on my left side. So I lay on my left side and I was like, nope, that's not gonna work. So then I turn over and lay on my right side and I'm like, that sucks a little bit less. So I, I laid on my right side. My alarm finally went off at 6.30 and I turn over and I turn off the alarm and I look at my phone and I have a text from the man who at 4.45, as I climbed into bed, sent me an I love you, but I missed it because I was trying not to vomit in the bed from dizziness. So I reply back, I love you too. I am dizzy as hell. And he says, well, what can I do to help? What do you need? You need a trash can to puke into? Is it your glasses? Like, what's up? And I was like, no, I need my C-bands. I feel like Wonder Woman right now. She's like, Whoa. you know, I, I need my C-bands. So he brings these to me and at 6.40 in the morning, I put them on and at 6.43, I was able to get out of bed. I've had a moment or two where it feels like my equilibrium's a smidge off. I feel like my ears like have liquid in them or something, but it's because of the way I slept on the couch and I already know it. But these things are doing very well. 
So this morning I, I get up and I come out here and I sit down on the couch. He's already on the couch on his computer doing work or whatnot with a blanket on and a, and a sweatshirt and his hood pulled up because we live in an igloo, obviously. And I sit down and I was like, do you want coffee or whatever or tea? And he's like, yeah, I'll take coffee. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to attempt this move around kind of thing. So I get up, I make him coffee. I make myself tea. I use the new cup. It's sitting here in my sink. I use this thing today with um, the, the lid on it that I showed you in yesterday's live stream, which I don't know what to do with the box. I think I put it up. Anyway, worked out lovely. I absolutely love this thing. Also glad I read the box. You can't microwave it. I microwave everything. It would have exploded in there. That would have been absolutely awful. But so I make the, the man his coffee. I make myself tea. I sit down. And then I'm like, oh crap, I need to go get something out of my, my, not my, this ugly ass Jeep Gladiator. They had me driving in from the rental or the dealership while they still work on my Jeep, which they're gonna have forever, it seems. So I'm like, I gotta go get something for the kid out of the Jeep. And he's like, I'll go get it for you. And I was like, okay, thanks. So he goes and gets it and he comes back upstairs. He's like, would you like me to drive her to school? And I was like, I'll see how I feel in a few minutes. I'm like, you know, cause if I feel even, even a little off, I'm definitely not getting behind the wheel, especially not with my kid in the car, right? So. He's like, how about this? We'll take her together. And I said, okay. He's like, and then I'll take you out to get breakfast so you don't have to cook anything because him making breakfast. I love him so much, but I don't want to eat anything he attempts to cook. It's not going to work out well. He tried it one time and he put fresh jalapenos in the pasta with the seeds and it was so hot that we all wanted to die. So he's not allowed to cook anymore. He can microwave something or like unwrap something, but you're not, don't touch my stove. So I take a shower, kids ready for school. We leave and drop off at school and we go eat breakfast, which was lovely is a nice breakfast. And then after breakfast, he was like, all right. And I was like, are we going back home? And he's like, yeah, unless you want to do something else. And I was like, oh, well, you know, since this place didn't have tea, I was just thinking maybe if you wanted coffee or something, and he was like, don't passive aggressive me. Do you want to go somewhere? And I was like, yes, I want to go get hot tea somewhere. And he was like, that's all you have to say. And I was like, okay, it's so weird for me to ask for things. I hate asking for things and I know I passive aggressively give hints all the time. And he t he's told me for 20 years, this is nothing new. He's like, beat me over the head with what you want. And he's like, don't passive aggressive leave hints because I'm not going to pick up on them. I'm too dense. Tell me what you want. And yet still 20 years in, I'm like, well, you know, if you wanted some coffee, I could drink some hot tea, but if not, it's fine. It's not a big deal. No, no, no. And I know it annoys absolute piss out of him. And yet I still continue to do it not quite sure why. Maybe I just like that little moment of friction. I don't know. But so I was like, yes, I would like hot tea. So he took me to our favorite place, Causeway Coffee. I got chocolate Earl Grey, which is so flipping good. Turns out chocolate Earl Grey, Earl Grey is not a real thing. I've tried looking it up. I tried uh, every tea place I could think of, Target, even Walmart, trying to find chocolate Earl Grey. Turns out they get it from New Mexico. It's like this special blend with uh, like these um, sacks of tea. They have like chocolate cocoa nibs or what nubs, nibs, nips, whatever they're called in there and all this other stuff. And it's so effing good. And then she puts like steamed brevia, which I guess is like half and half on top. Oh my God, I love it. So we went and did that. And then afterwards he was like, um, we're, we're driving home and he says, we need to find out what they're going to do to our apartment rent next month. Like, are they going to raise it like significant like they did this time? Because our for our second year lease on the apartment, it went up $200 a month, right? If they're going to do $200 a month again next year, we might have to leave because that's a lot. As much as we love the apartment, it's going to get so that you could literally rent a house for way cheaper than our apartment, especially now that technically it feels like it's a renter's paradise right now because there's so many homes on the market that haven't been able to sell because of like stupid high mortgage interest rates that people are putting them up for rent and maybe we'll go rent a home instead. So I've reached out to our complex and I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm like two months early asking this, but if you could just be a pal and tell me how much you're going to rake me over the coals for rent, uh, next, next lease. That'd be great. Right. So we know what we want to do, but anyway, so that was an amazing morning. Had so much fun. Just me and the man. I just, I love the fact that we're together all day long. I know it's weird, but I would hang out with him over anybody else here. Like I love him. So we get back. I just recorded a video for Squirrel Tribe, the main channel. It took me an hour because I talk a lot in case y'all hadn't noticed. Y'all know I run my mouth like nobody's business. So I made a video over there and then I was just playing around on Yahoo and I came across this article and I was like, oh, I got to tell him. So I have to share this with you. Now I want sushi for dinner and I'm going to say it's in the name of mental clarity and memory uh, function, but really it's because I just, I, I like sushi. But according to this, all right, this is on Yahoo. This is CBS news. Uh, a study conducted in Japan 
suggests there's more to sushi than just a healthy dose of fish and seaweed. Researchers at Tohoku University found that wasabi, that spicy little green um, stuff that they put on top, uh, dabbed on raw fish dishes, improves both short and long-term memory. And now my eye is just like crazy. Sorry, hold on, please hold. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. This is why I don't wear any kind of eye makeup, like liner or anything else, because I know that looked real special. I'm just gonna end up smearing it all over my face if I do. I think we're good. All right, so Rui Nauchi, sure, uh, the study's lead researcher and an associate professor at the school's Institute of Development, Aging, and Cancer, told CBS News the results, while based on a limited sample of subjects without pre-existing health conditions, exceeded their expectations. We knew from earlier animal studies that wasabi conferred health benefits, he said in an interview from his office in Northeast Japan. But what really surprised us was the dramatic change. The improvement was really substantial. The main active component of Japanese wasabi is a biochemical called 6-MSITC, a known antioxidant and anti-inflammatory known to exist in only trace amounts elsewhere throughout the plant kingdom. Now she has said the double blind randomized study involved 72 healthy subjects aged 60 to 80. Half of them took hundred milligrams of wasabi extract at bedtime with the rest receiving a placebo. After three months, the treated group registered significant boosts in two aspects of cognition, working short-term memory and the longer lasting episodic memory based on standardized assessments for language skills, concentration, and ability to carry out simple tasks. No improvement was seen in other areas of cognition, such as inhibitory control, the ability to stay focused, well, crap, um, executive function or processing speed. Well, don't give it to all us HD or ADHDers out there. I don't, I've never been like diagnosed with ADHD, but I've also never gone to the doctor for it. And I'm pretty sure I don't have ADHD. I just have way too much going on in my head and I talk a lot. That's not ADHD, just so we're all aware, I don't think. Subjects who received the wasabi treatment saw their episodic memory scores jump an average of 18% uh, and scored an average 14% higher than the placebo group overall. The researchers theorized that 6-MSITC reduces inflammation and oxidant levels in the hippocampus, the area of the brain responsible for memory function and boosts neural plasticity. Compared with the control group, the study said, subjects dosed with wasabi showed improved verbal episodic memory performance, as well as better performance in associating faces and names, which is often the major memory-related problem in older adults. Wasabi is a member of the mustard family of plants, the fiery condiment. Every time it says fiery condiment, I just picture cha-cha-cha. I don't know why. Anyway, the fiery condiment paste made, it, uh, made with it became prized in Japan centuries ago for its antimicrobial properties, which make it capable of killing off foodborne pathogens such as E. coli and Staphylococcus. <laughs> Caucus. Uh, anyway, while its flavor and aroma complemented seafood. A specialist in dementia prevention, Nauchi landed on wasabi treatment after finding high dropout rates with conventional methods of preserving brain health, such as the Mediterranean diet, exercise, and music therapy. A daily supplement he decided would be more sustainable, especially for seniors, while offering more benefit than any other anti-inflammatory antioxidant spices such as ginger and turmeric. The Tohoku University team aims to test wasabi on other age groups and explore whether the spice can slow cognitive decline in dementia patients. But here's the rub. The tangy paste served up uh, at nearly all sushi bars, even the ones in Japan, is almost certainly an imposter. For far more common than the real thing is a convincing fraud, especially made of ordinary white horseradish dyed green, which is what you'll get at any of your little mall food courts. They're like, would you like some wasabi on the side? And it comes in a little squeezy pack. That's not wasabi. Native to Japan, wasabi is notoriously difficult to cultivate. The plant takes nearly two years to reach maturity and requires exacting temperatures, shade, gravel, and water conditions. It costs more per pound than even the choice tuna it sits on. Gen uh, genuine wasabi must be consumed fresh with the stubby re rhizome or stem of the plant grated table side just before eating. On the plus side, just a small dab offers the same benefits as the capsule supplements used in the Tohoku study or 0.8 milligrams of 6-MSITC. Now, the, the study was published in the journal called Nutrients and there was um, really good feedback. I can't read the rest of that, but 
if you go to an Asian inspired store, a lot of times they will have small, like literally like tiny little containers of legit wasabi. Explain to me, or don't judge me, or I don't even know how to phrase this. When I go in there and I buy one and I try to eat that whole thing at once and my entire face is on fire and my nose passages are just done, I'm doing it for my memory. I'm doing it for you guys. I'm doing it because I love you and I want my memory to remember you. <laughs> so for those of you who are having um, issues with certain short-term, long-term memory things. I, what do, what do you guys do? Because I'm 41 and I, I blame a lot of it on the motorcycle accident I was in. I've talked to you guys about it. I had a, a slight skull fracture, but I was, I was out for a little bit because of it. And it seems that since then I've had a much larger issue of trying to remember certain things, certain words, things like that. I could blame it on, you know, when I went vegan for a few years and not getting enough B12 and things like that. I have felt much, much better in the last, um, I would say eight months since I went back to eating meat. I, once or twice a week, I will take sublingual B12 uh, drops, but most of the time I'm getting it from the foods that I'm eating or my multivitamins. I just like to once or twice a week give a little extra B12 boost. Um, and I've cut out coffee. I have not had coffee except for twice in three weeks. I've just been drinking low caffeine uh, hot tea, green tea, sometimes black tea for breakfast because it has a little higher caffeine content, but I do that maybe twice a day and I'm still not hitting as much caffeine as I would have with just one regular morning coffee. Not even to throw in the fact that I would normally have two, three, sometimes four coffees in a day, which I think had a lot to do with, you know, when I was like extra jittery squirrel or whatever else. I feel like I'm much, much calmer. I still talk fast as I'll get out and still have tons of stuff going up in my head, but I feel like just getting rid of the coffee has helped immensely. I haven't had nearly as many brain fart, brain fog moments, I don't think, where I have had issues recalling words, maybe once or twice um, in the past week or so. Um, but if I can go out and get some wasabi and, and see a difference there, I'm gonna do it. I, I, will, I will pay for some wasabi, like that, that good wasabi, that off the street wasabi, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. If y'all know a wasabi dealer, hit me up uh, so I can get the good stuff and try to help my memory a little bit that way as well. So that's that. Squirrel Tribe 2.0. I love you guys. That's all I had. I wanted to tell you about my morning and I wanted to tell you that if you go eat some real wasabi, not just horseradish dyed green, it could help improve your memory because the more you know, you know? So there's that. I love y'all. Have a fabulous rest of your Tuesday. My dudes, I'm going to see you tomorrow on hump day. Be excited.